The opinions expressed on the Simone Edwards show by our guest are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. They do not necessarily represent the opinions of the station, its owners, and or the Simone Edwards show and those affiliated with it. In no event will the Simone Edwards show, this station, its owners, guests, hosts, or affiliates be liable for the information disseminated on the program, including, without limitation, any loss or damage, indirect or otherwise, arising from information presented on the show. We trust you are of legal age and will consult appropriate professionals prior to employing any opinion expressed on the show. Many of the topics discussed are personal in nature, and some people may disagree with the opinions expressed on the show. We are open to your constructive criticism and or ideas for future radio programs. Please feel free to email us at the Simone Edwards Show at gmail.com. Again, that's the Simone Edwards Show at gmail.com. All right, everyone, we want to welcome you to another installment of the Simone Edwards Show. This is our Community Connection Saturday, and we are here with the founders of the Community Connection. Um, We've been having a great time in studio, offline, just kind of talking to them. And they are, when they sent me their picture um, for advertising, I was like, this is the cutest couple I have ever seen in my entire life. And they have lived up to the image. So I want to introduce to some and present to others, Matthew Mendenhall Mendenhall, Mm -hmm. and Tam. Camera Mendenhall of the Community Connection. Please say hello to our audience. Good morning. Hi. Hello, How's it going? Audience. All right. So I want to just like we, I want us to like get to know each other a little bit before we start talking shop. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how long have you guys been married? Going on three years this March. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, tell us your story because. When I read your information, it seemed as though you were from North Dakota, and you're not. You're actually... Yeah, I'm actually from San Diego. So I lived in San Diego all my life, mm-hmm. um, but I moved to North Dakota for a couple of years to help my brother out with the family business. Okay. And it was a teacher store there. So okay. we ran the teacher store for a couple of years, and then I came back to San Diego. I continued my sales career by doing marketing right. for Home Depot and, and other home improvement projects and different things like that. And the marketing then took me over to Las Vegas. Okay. And that's where I met Tam. And so you're actually from Los Angeles. Yes. How did you end up in Vegas? Just took a leap of faith. <laughs> I was like, I had to make a change. And my best friend and I had made plans to go. Mm-hmm. And I think it took me like three months to get all my stuff together in order to go out there. Um, so I, I transferred my job to Home Depot from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, mm-hmm. and we met in uh, Las Vegas. Yeah. So we're in Vegas. Like, tell us about the meeting. What was it? What was it like? Was it so was it love in, at first like, sight? <laughs> it was. It was. It was, it for was me. close. It was. was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I saw him, I had um, I had just walked into work, mm-hmm. and they always tell me walking and like look up and down the aisles, kind of greet people because they don't know you until you have on the orange vest, right? Right. So I saw him. I'm walking. He's like, "Hey," I was like, "Hi." He's like, "Haven't seen you here." And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, "I've been here a year and a half." Like, what? <laughs> so I was like, "Oh yeah, I haven't seen you either." But he had like a glow about him, and right. and I was like, "Okay, well, he seems really sweet and charming." Mm-hmm. So he's like, "What's your name?" I was like, "Tom Rand, Tony Amateur." He's like, "Oh, how do you spell?" I was like, "T A with the accent, M R A H." And he was like, "Oh, that's beautiful." I was like, "Thanks." Then my my um, front end manager was like, "Up, oh, stop harassing my cashiers," and she was like, "Go to the bathroom." Like, All right, so I left, and then um, he comes back, and second time gives me his card. He's like, "I really would like to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have any time." I was like, "I was like, cool. Um, thank you. I'll I'll take your card." I left it alone, and then a third time he comes back right at my lunch break, and he's like, "Well, did you want to go to dinner tonight?" I was like, "Okay." I had to come back because I knew she wasn't going to call me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so you like, let's just go to dinner. Persistence. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Were you gonna call him? I have a lot of business cards in my apron. No, it's just I probably would have been like in a few days. I'm kind of like a procrastinator, which is, you know, <laughs> bad. So I was like, I was like, all right. Was, his persistence is what caught my attention. I was like, wow. Because like usually mm-hmm. people are like, oh, wish your man. Oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. So I was happy that he was persistent. And so I go, I took my break and I call my nana. I'm like, nana, I met this nice guy. He wants to take me out tonight. You know, it's our Bible study Wednesday. She's in, still in L.A. And I'm like, I was like, I know it's Wednesday, but I think I'm going to go out on a date. And I was like, I'll send you all this information. So I, like, take his picture of his ID and his license plate. And I give it to my best friend and my nana. I'm like, um, I was like, I, I think I'll be safe. So then he comes over. And How did I'm, you get my ID card? 
asked you for it. Oh. Like, right there. <laughs> so I was like, let me, I'm, that's how my mom and my dad raised us, just to check you, you know, you got to check everything. I know right. who, who, you, who you're with. And um, so we did that, and then um, he went ahead and drove us in his car. Usually I, I decide to drive because I like to be in control. But <laughs> <laughs> I was like, go ahead, that's you can true. drive us. And uh, we had a great evening. And the, the thing that made me want a second date mm-hmm. was um, his depth of knowledge about the Bible and about, like, God's love. And he had this chart linking up spiritual beings with human beings and um, the aspiration or the ascendance of, of spirit mm-hmm. consciousness. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, mm-hmm. I've never had anybody talk to me about that. So I was like... You got some some roots in the Lord, like so. Yeah. That's what set me off, and then from there, our second date was I think we went to like Fizz, this uh, nice little bar. Mm-hmm. I think it's it's uh, something by uh, Elton John or something. But right. it was really nice, so mm-hmm. we had went there and just walked around, had a couple of drinks, and then we ended up talking and like singing church songs in the jacuzzi till like three o'clock in the morning, which is not. Typical. <laughs> right. So it was just so weird. I was like, ah, my neighbors were like, I heard you singing. You were just sitting in the jacuzzi all night. I was like, yeah, so it's kind of awkward. But it was a great, great night. It just, we just went our separate ways from there. And I was like, I was like, I think he's special, like really different. Right. So everything else went, went smooth. Right. After that, it was like a whirlwind. Okay, I'm going to pause you really quick. <laughs> we're going to back up to Matthew. Yeah. Um, because there's... Listen, y'all, I just gave up my woman card because of what she told me <laughs> offline. I just, I gave it up. I, I'm going to create another, another, you know, male, female, and then I'm just going to be in that other category because I've lost my woman card. Yeah, I just, I've given it up for the rest of my life. <laughs> so, I'm just, I'm done. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk to Matthew for a moment. So your skill set in sales, like you, you three times in, in one day, you went to the Home Depot. What yeah, made you was, decide like, um, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back in and ask her again? I was like, I'm not sure if I'm going to see her because... I go to different Home Depots in that city. Right. And and so the next time I would have been at the Home Depot probably would have wouldn't have been for another four or five weeks. Okay. So that's why I said, let me just go back in today. Okay. And ask her today. So for you, was it love at first sight? To me it was. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know? To me it was. Um, I actually didn't know until that second date. Okay. When we start really started diving in and talking and you know, and just really getting to know each other better. Okay. Then I was like, I think this is the one. Wow. Yeah. So th- I just find that so amazing because, and, and one of the things I loved about your story, I, I, I love about your story, Tamara, I'm not saying your name right. It's fine. Tamara. 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 One of the things I like about um, your story is that you actually had Bible study with your grandmother every Wednesday. That's just kind of like your standing appointment. Yeah. And... You're like, um, so grandma, uh, we have, we, cause you had had Bible study earlier in the morning. Yeah. Early that day. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then from that, so it's, you both have this love for God and it was, that's what connected you. I think so. Yeah. Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. So one of the things that I want to inspire our listeners with is for those of you who are in the God, when is it going to happen for me mode? Just trust him. And know that he'll take care of it because they're both from, well, you're from San Diego, you're from Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. but you met in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. Right. And you just so happened to meet in Las Vegas because you were kind of like, I want something different and I Mm -hmm. just want to move. Yeah. Yeah. And so just know that if you really believe, if you're trusting God for a relationship, know that he'll make it happen. So stop trying so hard. Absolutely. (laughs) What's Mm -hmm. funny, though, the year, my birthday before that, I was 26, Mm -hmm. and I was sitting on that same patio in my apartment in Vegas, and Mm -hmm. I was, like, praying. I was like, God, um, I'm tired of feeling like I'm doing the same thing, like running in circles. So I was like, what should I do? Like, so I just sat there, and I I went on this 60-day fast, like, no sugar, no salty stuff, no alcohol, no sex, no nothing. Stay mm-hmm. straight. So um, on that 60th day, I was praying in my room, and it was like just me and my little dog at an empty house. Mm-hmm. And I'm praying. I was, like, I was like, I just want to hear you. Like, tell me, let me know you're here. So I heard the warmest, sweetest voice say my name. And I just said yes. Wow. And I freaked out because I was like, I'm in the room by myself. I had like a moment. I was like, oh. 
So, um, <laughs> but after that, my best friend was like, yeah, um, stop looking. Just keep moving forward and stay focused on your goals and your dreams. And the person that's waiting for you will come right in front of you. And that's how it was. He was like, hey. I was like, all right. <laughs> Wait, no, he wasn't just hey. He was right. hey, hey how persistent. Are you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it was like, just right, like in my, it was like in my way. Like, I, can't, I couldn't pass him up if I tried. Wow. So it was like we just ran into each other. And it was perfect. So um, soon after that, my best friend found her husband, too. And they moved. We both moved to Vegas together, found our, our significant others. And she's now here in San Diego, too. Oh, wow. Yeah, so my best friend and I are really tight. So we okay. both found her. So with the little bit of time we have left, I would like you to explain to our audience why I have given up my woman's <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> so um, on the day of her wedding... <laughs> Please tell us what you did. I um I'm an avid baker, <laughs> so <laughs> I researched how much it costs to get a wedding cake, a four tiered, four flavored wedding cake. It's something like eight hundred dollars or eighteen hundred dollars, and I oh was my goodness. not uh, about to come out of my pockets for that. So I decided to make my cake and fill it and cellophane wrap it, freeze it, and take it to uh, with my my godmom's house. Tell them your starting point. <laughs> so I started. <laughs> in Vegas, I baked my cake, I wrapped it, filled it, put it in my cooler, froze it, drove it to Corona to my godmother's house, then drove it to San Diego for that Sunday morning, <laughs> frosted the cake in the church, um, went our reception hall, and then went ahead to the hotel, got my face ready, took my pictures, then headed out to my <laughs> wedding spot in Mission Bay. <laughs> I'm telling them about the flowers. <laughs> and um, so I like... I kind of gorilla styled the flowers. I went and um, bought some orchids, which are edible flowers. And then I grabbed some poppies, some California poppies in pink and green and orange. And I, I kind of swiped them from this, uh, this like, driveway. <laughs> 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 so I would chop it through the, this lady's poppies. And I just dipped out in the car. It's me and my, my two, my, two um, my bridesmaid and my, uh, my matron of honor. And we just hopped in the car and drove off. <laughs> But I had I had to I had to come up with a quick solution because I had um I had made orchids sugar covered orchids and they didn't they didn't turn out good they got like, wilted so I was like okay this is my my, my grill style moment to make this work so the poppies were replacing the the sugar covered uh, orchids and I had fresh orchids and I sprinkled a little bit of edible glitter on everything and my cake came out fantastic then um uh, ended up just going to the hotel getting my pictures so done. on her wedding day <laughs> she made her wedding cake. <laughs> Drove it from Las Vegas to Corona, then to San Diego, <laughs> set it up in the reception hall, went and got her face done, made a new batch of edible flowers, then got in her dress and got married. <laughs> so I'm done being a woman for the rest of my life. I just, I have given up my card. Um, it's been fun. I've enjoyed it to some degree, but... I now bequeath it <laughs> <laughs> all of my womanness. Whatever I have left is now been. Oh That's why I married her. <laughs> You're a smart man. Her. You are a smart man. <laughs> man. Okay, so um, what made you guys decide to go into business together? It was just a, a need. Um, San Diego was mis like when I came here, I felt like it was. It's a metropolitan city, but there was like so much disconnect with the businesses here mm -hmm. and the community, the sense of community between the businesses. Mm -hmm. So right. he was like, "I've been talking to all these businesses, and everybody has stuff going on, but nobody knows what each other is doing." Right. So he was like, "I'm gonna put together a directory, and we're gonna start talking to people and connecting businesses with people." So. We just came up with it from there. We were hitting the pavement like hard. Every almost every event that was going on, from what we got, we got here in November, like the twenty third of November, mm -hmm. right. right before Thanksgiving, and then we pushed from there. We got every farmers market, every cultural event, every um, every open house, every meet and greets, mm -hmm. getting cars, meeting people, letting them know what we're doing, um, yeah. asking them for permission to put them on a directory, letting them know it's free service and there's a Facebook, you can leave us comments, you can leave us questions or any updates that you want. And um, it just went from there and it snowballed. Now we're putting on, um, what's, it, what's his name? Roosevelt Williams III's event's coming up on the 20. 25th of March. Yeah. yeah. Is that the um That's the, the black power event. Business mixer. Right. For young black yeah. and in business. Okay. Yeah. yeah, my um technical director told me about that. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, okay. so um cool. 
Definitely, for those of you who are online right now, um, you're on Facebook and you're watching us through Facebook Live, if you have not done so, check out the Community Connection page, um, Tamra and Matthew Mendel Mendenhall. Um, we're going to find out more about the Community Connection and all the things that they're doing, how it got started, what its purpose is. So if you are a business owner, an inspiring business owner here in the city of San Diego, as well as Los Angeles, you definitely want to tune in because you want to find out what these young movers and shakers are doing we're going to take a break for station identification and we'll be back in just a moment We are back here in studio with, and I just have deemed them the cutest couple in existence. <laughs> um, we are back with the Menden Halls of the Community Connection. So let's start with what is the Community Connection? Let's start there. So the Community Connection is an organization that provides services, free services to businesses, individuals, organizations. Mm -hmm. um, we provide services for their businesses. So we mm -hmm. have a free calendar of events. Okay. So if you're running an event th that you have that you would like to advertise to the public, then just give us a call or message us on Facebook, and then we can put that event on the calendar for free on our website. And then the second service we offer is a business directory. We have a business directory for uh, each culture. Mm -hmm. So right now we're building up the black business directory, mm -hmm. and we'll put you in there for free. So just, again, give us a call and we will put your business in the business directory for free. Absolutely. And then the third uh, service that we offer mm -hmm. is the newsletter. We have mm -hmm. a newsletter that goes out to the community mm -hmm. and it features different things that's going on in the community. Oh, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And so um, I wanna back, backtrack just a little bit because you have, um, so if there's a Latina business, you have mm -hmm. All, all of the businesses that either cater to or pr primarily promote um, Latina business within, you know, whether it's the San Diego community or the Los Angeles community, yes. they can go there to find whatever it is that they need. Yes. And so yeah. you do that for um, for the African American community, the Latina community, mm -hmm. the Asian community. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, Everything. exactly. Yeah. It's it's, it's culture based. Right. And we offer a is faith-based, it's also family-friendly, okay. and it's culturally diverse. So so um, we are a faith-based organization, we we are Christian, mm -hmm. and we um, all the events that are on our calendar are right. family-friendly. Wow. So the, the events in the daytime, whether they be business networking or events, farmers markets, farmers markets yeah. um, any type of, any type of, um, you know, maybe a family movie night or something, mm -hmm. something that you can get out there and get involved in the community and just be a part and really just start talking to each other again. That's really what this is all about. Right, I love it, I absolutely love it. So let's segue into, um, let's use that as a springboard into the next question. What was the need that you were trying to fill when you all created this? So there's a, there's a couple of needs that we found 
And when we started this business in 2015, we were talking to different people in the community. Mm -hmm. And I had originally had this conversation with uh, Onaje Everett, right. a very good person in the community. And we said, hey, these the leaders in this community, mm -hmm. not just in San Diego, but Los Angeles and other major cities in the nation, aren't talking to each other. Right. They're right. doing their own thing. Um, and then also these organizations don't know that other organizations exist. Right. And then of course on the general population level, the general population, it really isn't getting out and getting involved. Mm -hmm. So we said, hey, we see an opportunity to, to get these leaders to start talking to each other again. Right. And get these organizations to start linking up with each other and cross promoting each other's events and really giving the general population opportunities to get out there and start talking to people. Right. And creating new relationships with people because we are all a family. Oh, I absolutely love it. And and what's great is um, going through you, it really, I'm not going to say it eliminates the need for advertising, but it, it it's like a grassroots, really build longevity um, and purpose because we're talking about getting out and meeting someone rather than just trusting an ad to take right. care of it for you, you now get out there and you're saying, hi, right. I'm Simone and I have a radio show and exactly. you have this and oh, we should connect and we should collaborate because what you're doing is amazing and more people need to know about right. it. Yeah. That kind of, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, so there, when I was reading through the information that you sent me, there were three words that kept just popping up in everything that I read. And one was faith-based, the other one was family-friendly and culturally diverse. Yeah. Why are those things important to you? We, um, our family is large. His family is um, most definitely culturally diverse, as is mine. Mm -hmm. He is a uh, masculine Apache and African-American. Mm -hmm. I am West African and African-American. Mm -hmm. And so our families have different, both dialects and um, food or national dishes and things we like to eat, right. which all stirs up, you know, what we like to eat. It makes us a melting pot. Right. Um, so our, our culturally diverse families led us to, you know, we search, we, we uh, go to different grocers to find great foods from right, different right. markets. So we run into all these new people and we've learned to, to love all their cultures. And right. we just want to share our love of our diverse culture with other people and, and especially like-minded people. Um, so our family, our families are, you know, our, our solid ground. They're mm -hmm. our foundation. So that's where we got the idea of it, because they're they're out there. Like most of our family, or his family is teachers, mm -hmm. and um, um, I'm sorry, work in like public school mm -hmm. or our personal private teachers. And then my family are officers, and um, my my grandma's a teacher or was a teacher. So we have this um, this love. For helping other people and it right. was just another way to, to kind of reach out um and also to share our story kind of a i don't know a mission mission of sharing love yeah. and joy and food like i love food i went to school for for culinary arts so anything that has to do with health and living long hopefully i live to 103 but those are my my personal goals and i just i want other people to to share their goals likes and aspirations through food and conversation and business too wow yeah. and also for the for the um for the for the faith-based part of it and the spiritual aspect, we believe that that when it's faith-based, God's going to take us in the right direction. Right. God's going to lead our business in the right direction. He's going to, when our goal is to bring the family together, then uh, like they talk about the body of Christ in Corinthians, mm -hmm. um, that body is, it's a tight-knit body. Right. And the spirit of God keeps it together. Right. So we figure that, hey, if we keep this uh, organization uh, faith-based, Mm -hmm. That spirit's going to keep the body together, and it's going to bring that family together, and bring bring us together so that we can start communicating with each other again, and go where God wants to take us. I absolutely love it, and and one of the things that um, that really stand out to me about the two of you and in starting this business, because so often, um, you know, people will clamor for what God was my purpose. Mm -hmm. Why did you create me? What am I here to do? And and really just using you all as the example. Look at your life yeah. and look at your foundation. What is in it? Because whatever God has put in your foundation is what you can pull out right. to find your purpose. Right. I mean, your families, your backgrounds, the diversity that's in your family, the diversity in your backgrounds really kind of propelled you into this 
okay, we want to take what we already know that's germane to us. Yes. And then take that and take it from a small scale and put it on a larger scale Absolutely. and bring everyone in. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. I love it. Absolutely love it. So um, my next question for you is um, the community connection really uses kind of a two pronged approach. Talk to us about that two pronged approach, because it's leaders and then it's community members. Yeah, exactly. So it's a it's a top down kind of approach. So we right. want we want to attack the we want to attack the organizations at the organization level and really get all these organizations connected again. This, this, um, right now we're focusing on the black community in San Diego right. and Los Angeles. Right. So um, we're, we want to get these organizations to know who each other are. We want them to know who each other are, and we want them to cross-promote each other's events. And then we got the leaders at the leadership level. Mm -hmm. um, now, some of these leaders, well, many of these leaders in San Diego and Los Angeles are wearing different hats, and right. they're a part of multiple organizations. Gotcha. So what we want to do is we want to get these leaders talking to each other, too, mm -hmm. because then they can start connecting those organizations together more more robustly. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, uh, we, we want to do a bottom-up grassroots approach, which is the general population. So we want to get out there and say, hey, um, everybody, you know, we have – all these wonderful family events you come out to, mm -hmm. come on out, get involved. If you're an entrepreneur, uh, come out and start network with, with other people, get your mentors, and really just start talking to each other again. So those three approaches mm -hmm. um, simultaneously will really get that family more cohesive. Oh, I, I love it, yeah. absolutely love it. And what's great is a lot of times, you know, we hear Southern California, right? And but San Diego and LA can be such diverse worlds. Absolutely. And so to know that there is this bridge that yeah. can connect business owners from San Diego to business owners in LA mm -hmm. who maybe do the same thing or want to expand their business, right. I think that's just a great way. Did you hear that? So if you're in San Diego and you're an artist and you're looking to connect with an artist in LA, yes. uh -huh. you may want to go through these guys. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. they have the connection. Yeah. Um, I'm just throwing that out there for free. <laughs> absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> you're absolutely welcome. Um, so speaking of that, you have um, part of it in San Diego and part of it in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So what's the, what, what is your big picture vision for the community connection? Do you want to branch out beyond San Diego and Los Angeles? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the goal is yeah. to be statewide, if not worldwide, if okay. we can um, mm -hmm. push it that far. But um, our dream is for everyone to have almost like a compass. So if you get in, like say I, I fly to New York. I'm not from New York, but I want to know what's going on, where I can see people who are like me, where I can find food that I'm going to enjoy, where I'm going to find great music and cultural events and you type in the community connection, it pops up and lets you know where you're at, what's local to you, where you can source your foods, where you can mm -hmm. find a good place to rest your head, where you can find a good place to hear some music and meet new people. Mm -hmm. So you're not necessarily alone when you're somewhere. Just like, um, I guess, going out into the world and trying to find a job. You want to find a connection who you can branch off to and find a career or find a, a uh, an open door. If it right. Was. So they will, it would act like that. Wherever you go, you can you can always find something that'll fit you or tailor to your your likes or dislikes. Yeah. That that's right. Yeah. And and you know we're focusing on disadvantaged communities right now. So gotcha. so okay. we of course want to want everybody to be connected. But right now the disadvantaged communities need the most help. Right. And we, we look at the we look at what's going on in the East Coast and in Atlanta and. And other parts of the country where Chicago. the um, African American community and the Black community already has it together, right. um, but we we want to focus on cities that uh, major cities that need the most help: San Diego, Los Angeles. Detroit. We want to do uh, Detroit with New York, uh, yeah. Austin, Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, sh you know, Chicago, that kind of thing too. Okay. Really, really get the really get the African American uh, and disadvantaged populations in those yeah. cities. Trying to build them up as a cohesive unit, as a cohesive family. Yeah. And then we can build up from there nationwide and eventually back out to the world as well. 
Okay. That's absolutely wonderful. And, and I really do love the concept because, for, for example, I like to travel. And so mm -hmm. for someone who likes to travel, it's kind of nice to know, um, I'm just projecting into your future. Absolutely. Amen. <laughs> that when that time comes, you know, and I decide that, okay, I want to go to, and I'm going to say like D.C., yeah. right? Um, I want to go to D.C. and I want to find out what's there that I can just type in Community Connection D.C. Mm -hmm. and I can pretty much find out, okay, here's everything that I know has been vetted, mm -hmm. that's safe, that's good, you're going to send yeah. me to the right neighborhoods. Right. The whole, this, here's where I can go during the day, here's where I can go at night if I want to go out, yeah. um, here's you know the best playhouses, whatever the case may be. And you guys are kind of like a, a, a warm blanket that I can yeah. take with me wherever I go. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Absolutely. exactly. We want people to feel safe. Right. And, you know, as part of the family. Right. And say, hey, that we have a family event yeah, we're going like to go to. like it too, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I think that's great. I really do. Um, so now, here's one of the questions that I, I want to ask you. Um, it has been said for San Diego that San Diego is kind of like a tough city. You know, it's a metropolitan city. It's a big city with a small town feel. Mm -hmm. And so to a certain degree, it makes it kind of a tough city to break into. Like mm -hmm. once you're in, you're in. Yes. But the, the getting in part, what are your what has been your observations? Well, it's, it's the uh, African-American community here in San Diego. It's about 150,000 mm -hmm. African-Americans. They're spread out throughout San Diego. But um, they're, they're, not as, they're not as excited or, or um, in tune with with t um, togetherness or cohesiveness as say Atlanta or other cities in the in the in the east or the south. Gotcha. So um, we figure we are a for-profit company. Right. We figure if we can make and we can cause people to become um, more more cohesive and more involved in San Diego, we think our efforts can be duplicated uh, elsewhere, like in New York, Chicago, um, Los Angeles. So San Diego is a pretty good testing ground, I think, for us. Right. That if and when we are successful here, mm -hmm. then, uh, which I know we will be. Right. Which is why we're doing it. Then we're going to go ahead and and uh, yeah. expand out. I think um, the businesses out here weren't, they're not necessarily tough to break into or tough to get to know. It's just, it's just trying to collectively find all of them. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, some, some people aren't. Um, into technology or don't right. want to necessarily put themselves on a, on a broader scale. Mm -hmm. They like that down home feel where it's, you know, it's, it, you know what you're going to get. They have fantastic, like there's a, a fantastic um, grill man. He has a truck and he, his food is amazing. Mm -hmm. But he's like, I just want to keep it small. He's kind of like um, word of mouth, which is fantastic, but I want everybody to know about him. Right, right, so right. I'm like, come on, let's push. Let's get, you know, more of a bigger venue. Let right. people know who you are, where you're at, because then it could only help you. Right. Um, so the businesses out here, they have a lot of fantastic foods, soaps, mm -hmm. lotions, and um, amazing jewelry. Mm -hmm. And we just want everyone else to know about them too. So the, um, I guess trying to find these these wonderful b businesses that have so much um, so much potential right. to be able to expand their business and make everyone aware of who they are and where they're at and where they can find them. That, that's been one of the testaments that's, that's been um, kind of a, a little bit of a hurdle, but mm -hmm. it's, it's going better. The more we communicate, the more we're out there, the more we invite them to come and see what we're doing, mm -hmm. the better it is to stir up the pot and get more people involved. And the more that brand starts to stick out and more people are more um, um, advert or are used to finding them or can readily find them mm -hmm. or they're right. searching them out like we, like we do. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. And it, it sounds like you have the the wonderful task of just kind of getting out there and pounding the pavement yeah. and, and meeting people yeah. from diverse cultures and, and neighborhoods and, and then bringing them together into this little mini melting pot. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely exactly. love Trying it. new things, that's the, that's the funnest part for me. Oh, my gosh. Enjoying yeah. all this <laughs> new food and fantastic soaps. Yeah, I could, yeah. I could talk forever about um, the wonderful people we've met and their products are fantastic like good for the skin good for the soul you know there's a um like you had danielle on your show i mm -hmm. think the yeah so her her business is thriving and amazing like i can't wait to get started i've been lazy about it but i was like girl i'm about to I'm about to start hitting the pavement hard too why not Right. Fitness should be my sickness, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Shout out to Fitness is My Sickness. Okay, okay you guys, we're going to take a break for station identification. We will be back with the Mendel Menden Halls of the Community Connection in just a moment. <laughs>
All right, we are back here in studio with the Mendel- Mendenhalls of the Community Connection. I keep tripping over my tongue. Um, I'm going to blame the flu. I'm going to blame yeah. the flu. <laughs> <laughs> um, so here are some of the things that I, I, I want to segue into, because you brought this up a little bit. Um, there are some businesses out there that are kind of tech- technology adverse, mm-hmm. and they're kind of like, mm, I just want to really. do what I do yeah. and not really. Um, and then there are... There are businesses who have embraced technology, mm-hmm. everything about social media. And so my question for you is, um, how? what can we do as a community to um, embrace technology rather than to demonize it? Because yeah. it's almost like they're, they're splinter camps. You know, there are some people yeah. who are like, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. And then there are others who are kind of like, no, technology is the reason why the community is broken down and we're right. not together because we have these artificial relationships through social media and yes. we're not coming together. How can, talk to us about what can we do to utilize the resource to help further the building of, the, of community? No, I mean, uh, just to feed off of what you were saying, it's it's a the technology should be viewed as a bridge right. to get where we want to go. So really, what we want to do is we want to we want to start talking to each other again. We want to be able to communicate with each other again. And I mean, even in the ancient days, uh, people would communicate with each other through the spirit. They didn't even have to talk. They would right. just think things, and you would know what they're thinking. Right. Um, you know, we really want to get back to where we were. Mm-hmm. And part of that, in order to help us get there, mm-hmm. is, to, is to utilize this tool of technology to say, hey, we can get to talking to each other again. Let's start talking to each other again. So let's look at it as a tool. Right. Um, and then also what you were saying, people uh, don't have websites. Some people don't only go by off of word of mouth, like right. the really good cook that we met at the yeah. grocery store. Um, you know, they, they were just off grid. Yeah. Um, but our job is to grab multiple points of contact information right. mm-hmm. from people. We want to grab their phone numbers. Uh, we, th- and then we go and we search for social media profiles. Yeah. Phone numbers, emails, mm-hmm. social media profiles, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And we just connect them through the community connection. But then right. after we've been there, at their, like, say, um, with the... I forgot his name, but if after we visit a, a business, we try their food or we try whatever it is they offer, and then we give our our opinion on it. Like, oh, you know, I like we had. I think I had like three massages, but three different fantastic women, mm-hmm. and they're they each of them have a different craft, but I just speak on the best about what they do and how much they've helped me. So once you show them that just a comment or a shout out of love and praise to what they're doing, right. it'll make people notice them, and that will get get the ball rolling even more so than what it has been. Right. So the the community connection and Facebook, if like we've learned that once you post an original post it will have more more of opportunity to show up in somebody's reel more often it'll come back so it'll give a person more opportunity to see your face even if they may not be interested in it at first they're going to see it and see it and see it and after seeing and hearing about it they're going to go and say hey let me check this out right so um not to bombard them but but just to remind them hey i'm here check right. me out i'm i'm you know i'm brown like you're brown come right. visit and see what i have to offer yeah. you because i'm here to love on you right um but it it literally bridges the gap between the word of the mouth folks and the people who are on Instagram, the people just may see you driving by. You know, they kind of it lets them get another view of it and from someone else's perspective. Because a lot of people, a lot of people base their shopping or their um, visiting shop or visiting venues based on what somebody else said. Right. So the best thing you can do for any business is to talk well about what they produce and what they provide, mm-hmm. so that they have um, a deeper understanding and, and it's just a personal touch. It just shows love yeah. and favor. Right. So. That's what we're trying to do. Get to know the people and put the people in front of new people. Just trying to link up hearts. I love that. I really do because it's a sense of, um, it's the oldest form of advertising Absolutely. and, and mm-hmm. the, the most strongest, yeah. which is word of mouth. Yes. Because the more trust is built up between the two of you and you become known as a go-to source mm-hmm. in the city, yes. 
then the moment you say, oh my God, try this restaurant mm -hmm. or try this um, masseuse or try this fitness center or try this nutri mm -hmm. nutritionist, yeah. then people start to automatically associate, oh, well, I know the Menon Halls that they recommend quality, so if they recommended it, then this is good yeah. and I'm gonna check it out. And then it starts to draw in a flood of people Absolutely. that way. Exactly. And, it, and, it, and it serves to um, take us, we can talk about it on social media, but the most important part is we start to cross that bridge. We start yeah. to use technology as a bridge to lead us back into the community rather than to splinter out. Yeah, exactly. the face-to-face -face experience is so keen. It's like so yeah. important. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, as business professionals, what are the top five mistakes that you see startups make? Any kind of startup. Spending too much money, like starting off your business in debt or saying, you know, I have to have this amount of money to, to do it. Right. When you can start from nothing. Start right. from nothing. Right. And I mean, because God's going to provide regardless of what you have or what you don't have. Right. But if you just work with what you have and push your dreams out there and make sure you, you put your um, best foot forward. But like I always say, quality. So if yeah. it has my name on it, you better believe it's going to taste good, look good, smell good, and it's going to be right. right. So you make sure that you're, you're producing the best quality product you can possibly produce and put your heart into it. If you put your all into it, it's, it's bound to come back to you and bless you in tenfold or, or more, you know? Yeah. So I would say having starting with a low overhead with the business, mm -hmm. starting with a sound business plan, having a fantastic mentor to guide your business plan, and allowing your your works to be your mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Right. That would be, like, the best thing for any startup. The, and and the, I agree. Advice. I agree. And the yeah. two biggest mistakes uh, when I ran the teacher store with my brother in North Dakota. Right. Um, uh, number one, we didn't have a mentor, and right. that's the biggest uh, mistake that I think we made. Right. Uh, we didn't have a mentor that that we uh, you know would consistently go see and grab and grab advice from. But what I, what I would recommend is have at least two mentors. That's really uh, good. Because and the reason why I say that is because you know have one mentor who's you know, like does things in on more on the risky side, mm -hmm. and then have another mentor who does things more on the conservative side. Right. And then you know we'll get together and say, hey, let's talk about what you know their strategies is and are, and then let's go ahead and make our decision. Yeah, work the balance. So Absolutely. that was one uh, mistake that we made. Uh, the other mistake we made was that we didn't have enough cash overhead mm -hmm. in the beginning. Right. So we were doing, we, we had to fill the store with merchandise and product, mm -hmm. uh, but we, we did it by ordering product on, on, uh, on credit. Right. And that's, that's a no, no, right. that, th that, that is a no, no. You, you can't, you, you probably could do it if the people were coming in consistently, yeah. right. but, but we didn't really have a firm grasp on the people coming in the store cons consistently. So so if we would have had a cash reserve doing that teacher store, mm -hmm. we probably would have been able to ride out the ride out the wave. Oh, that's really good advice. Mm -hmm. So um, low overhead. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you have a mentor. Right. And I agree with your comment about having more than one. Yeah. Um, John MacArthur, I, keep, I cannot for the life of me recall the book right now, but he talks about that in one of his books that you okay. can't just... Um, it's, it's not a good idea to just have one person mm -hmm. as your go-to because... Um, you know, one of us is a, is not as smart as all of us right. mentality. Right. Um, so low overhead, make sure you have a couple different mentors. Um, sound business plan. Have a sound business plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's great to have a dream, but have a business plan. And, and I, I want to say have a business plan that's open to being vetted by your mentors. Absolutely. Yeah. To have someone say, because um, I think so often we, we kind of subscribe to the, if they say something negative, then they must not be for me. Mm. No, if they're telling you to go for it, but this particular part of your plan is not going to work, it may not be a, it's not going to work forever. It's just not going to, it's not suitable for you right now. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, either I've been in business for this long or I've had this much experience mm -hmm. in this area. And so, yeah. Right. yeah, exactly. The construction criticism, construction mm -hmm. criticism always, it'll balance out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, the last one you said was do nothing on credit. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Well, in, in our saying, case, yeah. We, yeah. We, you Try know, to I, buy I cash. If you got it, you got it. If you don't, right. you know, be creative and make it work. 
That's yeah. the best advice. Great advice. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful advice. Um, my next question for you is, um, what's the best advice that you received that you kind of, it was good advice, mm -hmm. but you're kind of like, mm, yeah, I mean, it's good. And you took, you waited a while before implementing it. And then after you implemented it, you were like, why didn't I do this sooner? Mm. Have you had that experience and what was yeah. it? So for me, for me, it was, is, it was putting my pride aside and asking for help. Gotcha. And, you know, I, I, I grew up thinking that, oh, it, it, uh, it, um, I'll look weak if I ask for help. But that's, it's silly to think like that. Right. Because there's other people who have already done what we want to do. Right. And they have experience and they've already done it. So we just need to ask them for help. And let's ask them for help and avoid those all those mistakes. Right. Right. So really just putting my pride aside, asking for help. And if I would would have waited, you know, it, I mean, I, I'm kicking myself for waiting that long. Right. But if I would have done that a lot so sooner, I probably would have made much better decisions in the years past. Wow, that's very transparent. Thank you so much for that. Because it's something so simple, but yeah. it's so true. It's the whole like, I, I have to ask you for help. Yeah. You never know who's that person that has the information that you need to propel you to the next level. I mean, so what's so interesting is that it's counterintuitive because you would think that if you ask for help, people are gonna look at you like you're silly. Mm. But when you ask people for help, they wanna help you. Yeah. Right. And they wanna give you that knowledge. People have so much knowledge, they wanna give it to you. So so once I pass that barrier of fear mm -hmm. of asking other people for help, I found, oh man, it's it's so much easier. And, uh, and we're getting all this help now, it's, it's, it's wonderful. That's fantastic. Yeah. What about patience, you? Patience, being okay. patient. So like, I, I'm, I, I call it, we call ourselves a fire and ice. I'm the <laughs> wild one, he's the calm <laughs> one. And he keeps me focused, he's my anchor. So I, I'm always used to being hasty. I'm like, I wanna do something, I'm about to do it right now or yesterday, I wanna do it yesterday. Right. So I, I have, have no to idea learn. what that is, by the way, none whatsoever. <laughs> Everyone, you've been there where you're like, God, I want that new car, I wanted that car 10 years ago, before you came out. But uh, right. I used to rush into things mm -hmm. thinking I had a, a concept of how to how to do it right, or mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing, I got this, mm -hmm. but you end up bump your head. So my my dad and my pastor would be like, hurry up and wait. It's mm -hmm. so like sit down somewhere, say what you're gonna, say what you want to do, and then ex put together a plan to execute it, mm -hmm. and then take account of the pitfalls that could happen, take account of the losses that could happen, right. and that's what helped me to like settle myself, especially when I'm like gung ho. Like I usually just run into things kind of have have seen. But when I get that one, like, ah, I'll just, you know, <laughs> improvise. I'm improvising my life. But um, the slowing, slowing myself down and really taking time to consider the cost, right. consider what's going to happen, what, what things I need to figure out first, right. that really helped me. So patience, being patient, understanding what it is, the goal that you're trying to execute and knowing how to do it, and especially asking for help is absolutely keen. Like you have to, I have to know where I'm going or at least talk to somebody who's been there. You can't right. cross the desert with somebody who's only lived in a su suburban city, you know? Right. Saying? So most definitely being patient. Great advice. And, and, and it's really foundational things, you know, mm -hmm. patience and letting go of pride and asking for help. It's like, those are the things that really need to be in the foundation of any business absolutely. venture, any venture that someone you, you want to start, that you want to have um, quality, and longevity mm -hmm. to help you grow. Yeah. Absolutely love that. We are uh, <clears throat> two minutes over our time. <laughs> I'm getting I'm getting the notification from our TD. So mm -hmm. we'll be back in just a moment with the Menden Halls of the Community Connection. Do you have any questions, comments, or concerns about today's show? Would you like to share your testimony or any constructive critiques? Would you like to know how to be a guest on The Simone Edwards Show? Please feel free to email us at thesimoneedwardsshow at gmail.com. We are also available on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram. Be sure to follow us to receive updates regarding the show and our other ministries. Okay, we are back here in the studio. We are about 10 minutes away from the top of the hour, and we are um, with the Menden Halls. Have a wonderful interview. Thank you so much for being in the studio with us today. Um, here's my question that I want to ask you. 
what do you do to cleanse your business palette? Because a lot of times in business, we can become so myopic. Mm -hmm. And this is where I want to go. This is what I want to accomplish. This is what I, what I want to do. That if we're not careful, we can start to stifle creativity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what mm -hmm. do you do to kind of cleanse your palate so that you can start over and see things from a different perspective? Well... I always look for businesses who are doing better than I'm doing. Okay. So, like, um, we found this man. I think his name is um, Philip, Philip something. But he's on Instagram, and he makes amazing chocolates, like the most elaborate, beautifully created with this. He has, like, an eye for design and a palette, like, of the gods. So mm -hmm. I've been looking at the, the flavors that he puts together, his presentation, his execution, the way he brings in his, um, I call it the lifeblood of the business, the way he continues to re replenish it, is so flawless. Like, like he's thought of it in my head. He, I'm like, he's thought mm -hmm. of everything. Right. Um, and I, I've, I have a business called Divine Decadence, and I am learning to turn my business over to make it more palatable, more diverse, and more healthy, health mm -hmm. conscious, mm -hmm. and at least to, to pull in um, or change, change directions in more of a um, a healthy, uplifting way, so it's not burdensome or calorie calorie filled things all the time. So to have more variety and more um, more of a how would I say this? To have more diverse and more in interesting combinations. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up divine decadence. Yeah. Talk, decadence. Talk to us about that. I just I, I love those two words. Yeah. Divine decadence. are just kind of. <laughs> Flow right off, right off, right out of the mouth, yes. right out of the lips. What is Divine Decadence? Divine Decadence is my bakery, and it's an online bakery. You place your order online, and I'll get an email or text to my phone, mm -hmm. and I can call you with um, more information or to ask you more questions, like what are you, what are you allergic to, or what do you like more mm -hmm. so than others? Say so if you like buttercream or if you like um, whipped cream, however, however your palate rides, and I just kind of take. Um, intake from the, the clients to see what it is that I can best suit them with. And I love being creative. So what's there is not all that I can do. It's just a almost like a blueprint to what you could have. But you can ask me for anything. And I do, you know, gluten-free, custards. I do um, vegan-friendly. I do wow. di diabetic-friendly. Because my, my grandmother is diabetic. So I've always kind of tailored to what people need and what they like. And mm -hmm. most definitely, I am creative. I can come up with anything and we'll do I'll do tastings and everything. Um, so what are some examples of the things that you do through Define Decadence? I have uh, cookies and cakes, pies, mm -hmm. everything from chocolate chip to red velvet cake, red velvet cookies. Mm -hmm. um, I have a new, I'm starting to make new um, snacks or treats that are like Rice Krispie treats, but with ancient grains like kamook and spelt and um, rye. Oh, wow. So I'm trying yeah. to push for health now uh, more so than ever. And... I'm, I'm incorporating fantastic flavors and tastes mm -hmm. with textures and health so that people can have the sweet treats they crave with a healthy um, backing. So we're trying to go for things that are nutrient rich, that are, have a great amount of fiber, protein, things that will keep your body going. Mm -hmm. So I have a lot of um, uh, like kind of similar to kind bars but with more grains that are African based. So I do a lot of quinoa, a lot of Am, uh, amaranth and a lot of um, teff mm -hmm. and incorporate that in my cooking, my baking to make them more nutrient rich for oh, our wow. bodies. Yeah. So I've obviously heard of quinoa because that's kind of like one of the buzz grains right yes. now, but kef and am, am, oh, amaranth? Teff and amaranth, yeah. Amaranth, yeah. Amaranth, yeah. yeah. Amaranth. They're what is beautiful. That? There's these teeny grains with all this nutrient. They're fiber rich, protein rich, and they're amazing for the um, the brain, brain mm -hmm. stimulation, brain growth. And they're alkaline too. And they're alkaline, they're yes. Alkaline we're, too. we're trying to make your bodies yeah. last. I'm trying to get to 103. Yeah. 103 <laughs> is my number. Mm -hmm. right? So our, um, our intent is to fill our foods with nutrient and fiber rich foods that will not only aid the body, but it'll make the body more alkaline and make your body work the best for you. So my, my motto is to live health. Mm -hmm. Not right. just talk about it and say I'm trying, but I'm going to do it. And right. through any, everything from my desserts to my bacon. I also do savory foods as well. So I will I can cater either side. We can do breakfast sandwiches or we can do breakfast um, muffins or, or granolas or cereals, however, however you like. I am most definitely um, I have a vast variety of things I could do. 
and um, I'm open to it. And so day. this is divine decadence. Mm-hmm. So you do um, you do um, sweet and savory. Yes. Great. So what's the website? How can we find out more information? It's ddbakery.net, and you can find me on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and since my face is smiling, as usual, <laughs> I'm always like, hi. But, um, yeah, contact me. My, my phone number is 714-989-3405, mm-hmm. and I'll take phone calls. I'll take text and any um, suggestions and or questions if you have, um, say, like, favorites or even um, things like our Uncle Andrew has this, this pie, an avocado pie. And I've, mm. I've never, I was like, I was like, what is this avocado? It's supposed to be sweet. And you assume avocado, you know, salty, savory avocado or guacamole dip, but it's mm. a, a sweet pie with the, like, a, I think he said something like macadamia and um, mm. graham cracker crust. And it's like this smooth avocado with lime and lemon in it, almost like a curd, but it's all, it's not cooked. It's just a chilled pie. Oh, so like I a key lime. Think, yes, like a key lime, but with avocado, and it's I'm, like creamy and zesty. You had me at macadamia. Yeah, <laughs> that, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna try this. So if you have a recipe or right. an idea of a recipe that you've had as a child or have had at a, a restaurant, and you can't quite put your finger on what's in it. Give me a call, and I'll figure out how to make it work. So right. I am, I'm down f- to try or create anything new. I'm always open for suggestions and. Um, creativity is my niche. It's my papa named me Kumba. So <laughs> let's try something. I love it. I love it. Um, so you all are new-ish parents. Yes. Yeah. Um, especially working with the community connection and all the things that you want to do to bring um, diversity of culture together and to build communities and to get us talking to one another again. Um, talk to us about the legacy that you want to leave your child. What what do you want to leave? What do you want her to remember about dad, Matthew? And Tamara, what do you want her to remember about mom? I, I want our daughter and, and our children, God willing. <laughs> yeah. um, we want more. Okay. Um, I, I want our daughter and future children to, to know that we have tried our best and mm-hmm. put our best foot forward mm-hmm. to, to bring everyone together as a family again. To solidify right. the future, yeah. mm-hmm. right. and we, we we know that when when that's when that's done, then their future is solidified because children will copycat. Right. And so uh, when we when they see us solidifying their future, they're going to be more likely to solidify their children's future. Yeah. And we just want to we want to build that um, generational thing, uh, and we want to have that go on and on and on growing and communicating yeah yeah so she sees us talk to people every day meeting new people asking Mm -hmm. them about their cultures and tasting new foods and um being able to really dive into a personal conversation and relationship with people so she's gung-ho about talking to people like she is a she has a huge heart and a big personality but she is she has um this longing to just want to meet and greet people she's like hi kids how are you doing like she she is a little me (laughs) and i love that she's so outgoing and spontaneous but her her heart is in uh, the right place if she sees somebody hurting she wants to know you know what's wrong are you okay you need help my mommy can help you like she's very animate about being um being there for people to be kind um and it seems like in this world so so many people's hearts are are callous or dry or they have no sympathy towards one another especially in a, in a, a situation of need Right, and so I we're trying to show her that we are all here to help one another. If I'm if I'm failing at my business and I have a friend or a neighbor or um, uh, anyone who is doing a little well off or better than me, I should want to become friends with them. I should want to learn from them. Mm-hmm. So it's a studious mindset. Right, letting her know that it's not, it's okay to ask questions. It's okay to bump your head, but the greatest thing is that you get back up and you try it again and you right. try it with a resolve. Um, and a knowledge of what I can do to make this work. And I love that you've instilled in her at a young age that failure is okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because so often, I I think one of the things that cripples a lot of adults, um, and I know it was was a battle that um, I had to fight through and conquer, was the idea of failing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You do something and you want to succeed, and it doesn't go the way, and so it's kind of like, oh, my God. 
but being an entrepreneur um, and, and starting in your business, whether it's for profit or nonprofit, whatever the case may be, being an artist, yeah. um, it's going to be a series of trial and error. Absolutely. It's going to be a yeah. series of, I'm going to try this, and if it fails, that's okay. I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to try it again. And so I'm failing forward yes. rather than failing backward. Right. Yeah. Right. That's right. Yeah, exactly. So I love that you've instilled that in her at a, a young age because I think if we can eliminate the fear of failure and see failure through a different set of lenses, right. mm -hmm. then we can embrace the lessons that are in the times when we, you know, I, I tried this venture and it didn't work. Right. Okay, that's fine. It didn't yeah. work. Absolutely. What did you learn from it? Right. And that's what can you do to kind of use that as a, a launching pad for next time. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, we tell, tell her, her change is the only constant. Keep moving <laughs> right. forward. Right. So. And sometimes, yes. yeah, we tell her, say, some, when she falls, I pulled up my hand and say, sometimes you fall, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Because you just take a deep breath and, and get, get back, back up, up again. again. Right. right. And then we, and we get back up and keep going. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right. So we have about one minute left. Talk to us about how, um, Give us information about the community connection and what's the next event that's coming up um, okay. so that people can find out more about you, come out and meet you guys in yeah. person. Absolutely. Find out what a delight they really are. And, and Tamara has my woman card, so I don't really know <laughs> what I'm going to be like going she forward. Can have but that. Come, she, she come and card. bake with me. <laughs> we'll work on it. I will take you up on that Please. offer. So good. talk to us about the community connection. Um, first and foremost, where can we find you? You can just give us a call. My uh, Our phone number is 619-944-4911. That's my number. And my wife's number is 714-989-3405. And you can find us on Facebook at The Community Connection. And on um, Instagram, I think we have we have one coming mm -hmm. up. But uh, also our website, the communityconnection.com. Yep. Community Mm -hmm. communityconnection.us I'm sorry, communityconnection.us mm -hmm. and um, you can find us on Facebook and, and on the web and we'll be um, most definitely calling you back or texting you back and allowing you to speak your mind let us know what we could change or what we could add to it and we're, we're here to share um, any of your and all of your events we also have an event coming up on March the 25th mm -hmm. and it'll be um, it's called Powers put on by the Young Black and in Business and it's by the, um, Roosevelt Williams III, mm -hmm. please um, feel free to go on our Facebook page and like and comment on that event. We also have vendor tables that are for free, absolutely for free. So please um, follow through and we'll see you there on the 25th. So yes. this young um, young business, is this mm -hmm. young chronologically or young at heart? Both. Both. Okay. It's actually absolutely. both, yeah. Okay. Um, so it's open to the black and African American community mm -hmm. and we would want you to be there if you're an entre entrepreneur, entrepreneur there are tables available for Absolutely. you that are free so please um, yeah. we're going to post the information on this Facebook video we also have another event coming up um, put on by economic development ministry yes, yes. and we're going to go ahead and post that event it's in April so you still have a little time to RSVP to that one but that is event is going to help you take your your business to the next to level, the next level. and there's mentors there that that you need um yeah, that if, if you need mentors then there are mentors there available for you and so, funding and Absolutely. funding as well too Absolutely. so we're going to post that information as well awesome so for my entrepreneurs and aspiring entrepreneurs artists whatever the case may be um you no longer have um an excuse if you <laughs> want information the information is right here for you through the community connection definitely make sure that you mark your calendars for march 25th we have the um Young, we have the young. power yeah, connection young coming black up. And in business. Young, <laughs> black, and in business. <laughs> yep. And so that's young chronologically as well as young at heart. Mm -hmm. And then the economic development ministry um, will be having their event in April, April. Mm -hmm. and we so were we're gonna find out about taking your business to the next level financially because it's great to have a dream, but if you don't know how to manage money, um, your your dream is probably not gonna go very far. Yeah. Right. So it's almost like a car without gas. You can only go for so long. So make sure you check that information out. If you have any questions about the Community Connection, you can reach them directly on Facebook by the same name or on Instagram. Yes. Or if you just wanna segue that information through us, reach out to us at the Simone Edwards Show and we'll get that information to them. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your time. And we will see you next Saturday here on the Simone 
Simone Edwards show. It'll be the first um, Saturday in March. And so that is our youth and young adult spotlight. And we have a great guest in store for you. Look for more information coming in the week. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.